everyone. I am Akshita and I am your host for today's webinar, How to Build a Matic Stack for Mobile Growth with Sahil Deswal. Before we begin the webinar, let's do a quick technical check and also go through some ground rules. If you can hear me, click on the raise hand option that's on the right hand side of your screen. I can see some hands going, so guess we're ready to go. This is a live webinar and we'll walk together through the common questions that you might have around building a Martic stack in the right manner. We have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar where Sahil will answer any questions that you might have. So feel free to key in your questions through the chat window that's also on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, this is the first time ever we've done a live video webinar. So we are doing away with the presentations. So feel free to tell us what you think about this format as well. Another important information to all our attendees, we'll share a recording of this webinar at the end of this session. So let's get started. I'm really excited to be chatting with Sahil Deswal, a digital growth and marketing leader with more than a decade of experience across media and entertainment, e-commerce, online grocery and agency portfolios. Sahil heads the growth, marketing, and analytics functions for the Times of India, which is a part of Times Internet Group. He is responsible for the growth of 25 plus businesses with a core focus on product and mobile ma marketing. Sahil additionally heads growth for the gaming verticals, including properties like Crickplay and Bazi Now. He's previously worked with Big Basket and Maidala where he led the digital, mobile, product marketing and partnership efforts across web, mWeb and mobile app properties. A truly mobile first marketing professional and entrepreneur, Sahil is one of the rare blends of full stack marketing and analytics competencies, having worked across brands and agencies. Just yesterday, Sahil was shortlisted as one of the top 100 global marketing leaders 2019 by CMO Asia and World Marketing Congress, Congress. Congratulations, Sahil, and I welcome to, to the webinar. We are excited to have you here. Wow, thank you. Thank you for the generous introduction, Akshada, and uh, it's absolutely my pleasure to be a part of this webinar. Uh, also thankful to Mo Engage for uh, bringing such quality discussions to users across the globe. I still remember when I was starting out in digital, I never had access to these resources. Uh, life would have definitely been easier. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Sahil. Uh, while we're at introductions, I'll also take a quick minute to talk about MoEngage. For those in the audience who are new to MoEngage, we are a customer engagement platform that helps consumer brands build meaningful conversations with their audience and fuel growth. We had the top brands in over 35 countries build one-to-one -one customer engagement across a host of digital channels, bringing them closer to their customers. So let's get straight to the topic. We are in the midst of a revolution in terms of marketing practices. This is also because consumer behavior has transformed drastically over the last few years. If surveys are to be believed, as high as 69% of consumers browse products online before they shop. The consumers today are more digitally active and they don't necessarily need a salesperson to take them to the point of a sale. So the role of marketing has shifted from supporting the sales function to engaging with the consumer across the purchase journey. So my first question to you, Sahil, how do you look at these changing dynamics in the marketing ecosystem? So uh, an extremely relevant question, uh, Akshada, and uh, thanks for uh, raising this, you know. Uh, just recently, a uh, KPMG report came out, uh, you know, and that said personalization and integrity are the two most important pillars of a brand CX strategy today. Uh, and, you know, on the other hand, uh, back in June 19, there was a report by Nielsen that said that uh, consumer disloyalty is now the new normal. Uh, what do these both these reports tell us? It tells us that uh, users are now looking to unlock value in different ways. Uh, you know, in essence, we are living in a world which is more VUCA today. VUCA, in short, is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the decision-making process for the customer today has evolved so rapidly that it's not just transactional anymore for the brand. And uh, there are way too many touch points before a purchase decision is made. 
and uh, looking at the right data points and technology is now having to become at the heart of any online business so uh, just to elucidate this point let me explain this through a simple example you know uh, back 10 years ago a young couple had to buy a washing machine the process was very simple they would uh, simply walk into an outlet the salesperson would engage them uh, talk about products which are uh, having the best margins for the business uh, obviously look at quality and need for the customer uh, the couple would just simply transact have the washing machine delivered home and the process would end there so typically uh, it would all happen in one day now today if you take the same young customer you know the, that young couple looking to buy the washing machine uh, it starts with information research on the websites you know they would go to uh, a samsung or an lg or any of these brands look at some of the products that they like uh, then they straight away head to a e-commerce platform to look at the best prices uh, to look at the reviews of uh, these these particular washing machines and then uh, if they are convinced then they want to physically inspect the piece before they buy it so they will go to google maps uh, look up the nearest store and visit uh, the outlet the salesperson would obviously tell them uh, you know the best price available but they will now start negotiating with the salesperson and say hey we already saw this online and it is quite possible that they will not come back by buying the product they have just done their research and due diligence and let's say when the next big sale will come up from any of these platforms that is the time when uh, they will go ahead and make the purchase decision uh, so you see the the number of touch points and the amount of research that has gone into this very simple task of purchasing uh, a product you know that's that has brought in a lot of complexity for brands and that has given rise to stuff like personalization and omni-channel experiences because you want to make sure you know what the customer is doing at every touch point so uh, I, I feel uh, it's extremely relevant and uh, this is something that we as brands are also trying to figure out yeah and i think that's why there's a lot of emphasis placed on building the right martech stack today so, uh, but before we go towards building the stack, I think the first question that our audience has on their mind is, what is a Martech stack and how does someone decide if their company needs a stack at all? And what are some considerations to keep in mind? Okay, uh, great. So uh, let's try to keep it very simple when we understand what Martech stack is. Think about a car. You know, a car is a collection of moving parts and technology. But ultimately, its job is to get the customer from point A to point B. And uh, if you were to take that analogy and say, what is a marketing stack in this case? It is a number of different technology platforms that are meant to be used by a particular brand to attract, engage, understand, and uh, you know probably retain customers in the most efficient way possible. So to combine both these examples, uh, how can marketers get from point A to point B uh, for instance, uh, for them, this might be from getting the customers onboarded to getting the transactions. And basically, a marketing stack will now become a technology tool or a set of tools that enables you to meet your marketing goals as efficiently as possible. Uh, to answer the next part of the question, uh, I think every business today needs to invest in a basic MarTech stack. It's a, it's a pretty much a moot question in today's day and age whether I need a stack or not. However, uh, to answer the question of how one has to evaluate a MarTech stack, it all boils down to defining your marketing strategy first and being clear on what exactly you want to achieve, you know, and, and how these technology tools can assist you with your goals. So uh, to give an example, uh, let us say a business targeting a demographic audience in the range of 25 to 35 year olds, uh, let's say with an average ticket size of 1500 rupees of purchase history will have uh, very different MarTech needs versus a, a, say a global B2B company uh, dealing with C-suite executives, you know, because the needs of these C-suite executives are very different from the, from the B2C setup that the other example had. So uh, as marketers, whenever we are evaluating our MarTech choice, you know, we need to answer a couple of very basic questions. Uh, the first question being, who are your customers you know whether you're operating in the b2b space or the b2c space de uh, clearly define who your customer is going to be today and tomorrow uh, b what size is your customer base today and likely to be uh, let's say in the next 12 months or 24 months or 36 months the reason this this question is pertinent and important is because when you're evaluating a tool today you are at a at a very low scale but when you are going to scale up the, the cost efficiencies 
the kind of technology enablements the latencies will all kick in so you need to make sure that as a business you are geared to deal with these complexities by defining your roadmap third uh, what geographical area are you marketing to and uh, the presence of local support from your martech stack in that geography so uh, just to give an example uh, a lot of platforms that we use are not necessarily based out of india uh, the support might be based in india but uh, the headquarters are not here uh, about five years ago these platforms did not even have local support <coughs> in the country so uh, it becomes very difficult to troubleshoot or to raise tickets and to get answers uh, if, if if you know you you take a tool which might be number one in their own vertical but is not locally able to support your business needs uh, the fourth thing what are your goals and kpis and uh, the ability to customize per business that you're looking for uh, a lot of times uh, your line of business is not necessarily looking at uh, uh, you know standardized metrics that these uh, platforms offer so uh, just to give perspective uh, when when i was with big basket and at that point in time online grocery was taking up uh, we were working with a couple of platforms which were also startups but uh, this enabled us to work with a work with them at a stage where they were able to customize to our needs and uh, not necessarily everything that was preset was going to be something we would have used so it's important that uh, you know you look at the ability to customize for your business uh, the fifth one uh, needless to say which life cycle is your company at at this stage uh, you might be a startup you might be a established startup you might be a conglomerate uh, depending on the kind of stage that you are at, uh, you will have to also put that into consideration when you're evaluating your Martech stack. Uh, why I say this? Because uh, resource availability, uh, both in terms of financial as well as technological considerations will also have to be factored. So let's say you are a bigger organization with in-house teams which are able to support technology needs. Uh, you're able to build something in-house. Uh, your consideration will be very different from a startup where let's say both financial availability and technological consideration is low so uh, that is also something uh, that that brands will have to factor Akshada. okay <clears throat> i think you've given us very very uh, pertinent five six considerations and uh, i believe uh, i'm sure our audience has made a note because i think this is like the go-to checklist someone needs to have in their back pocket if they are going to start evaluating martech stacks so thank you for sharing this sahil uh, another important area that most businesses uh, commonly face a challenge when it comes to choosing a Martech stack is which category do I choose from? Because there are so many tools available out there, so many different types of tools. So uh, what are the different categories of Martech stacks that exist today? What does the landscape look like? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, you're right. Uh, more than 7,000 Martech solutions available today, uh, more than 6,000 vendors. Uh, which offer these uh, these solutions to companies, you know, and this makes for quite a challenge for an organization to pick and choose from uh, Typically you will see that a business <clears throat> will always need to include a couple of things within that consideration You know, for example measuring your user acquisition efforts uh, Measuring on-site engagement whether it's on your website mobile site or your mobile app uh, typically looking at user retention looking at cohorts uh, user behavior analysis to deeply understand how your customer journey is trending across your product right from onboard to transaction uh, CRM which is uh, which is very important to get the voice of the customer both proactive and reactive uh, competitive intelligence uh, look at how you are trending versus your competitor because ultimately relevancy will come from there uh, sales looking at sales uh, transactions managing that entire life cycle communications diagnostics so you see a lot of things are uh, moving parts for an organization to to have the customer have a great uh, experience on their platform uh, now broadly if i was to categorize this this entire martech into six uh, categories I would, I would choose these six categories you know a advertising and promotion uh, to give perspective uh, these would be platforms like apps flyer apps Alar, google ad manager etc uh, which are going to help you with your user acquisition uh, advertising and promotion needs uh, second i would i would like to think of it as customer uh, cms a content management system a user experience and engagement uh, platform 
uh, where where obviously mowing age is is a part of that journey and uh, urban airship for example would be a part of that journey uh, the third category I would feel is social media and ORM, which is a relationship management with your customers. And uh, some examples would include Hootsuite, HubSpot, uh, to name a few. Uh, fourth, probably think of it as commerce and sales. So your typical Salesforce platform becomes an example within this category. Uh, a very important consideration for emerging companies as well as uh, critical mass companies that carry critical mass is data management platforms DMPs so Lotame, Nielsen, Adobe all of these are examples of DMPs uh, we at Times Internet have our own DMP called Columbia uh, and lastly uh, the category that I would choose is data intelligence you know data intelligence could be stuff like Google Analytics and Firebase for example and and these could cater to needs of various functions and even you know right from executives to product managers uh, to marketing managers so uh, in my mind these six categories is where your stack is going to ultimately lie uh, that's that's a great uh, description and i think you've given so much clarity there sahil in terms of you know breaking them down into specific categories that uh, brands can look at a lot of time to figure out these buckets you know and uh, there was there was a time when we would deal with 10 20 different vendors all trying to do some part of what we need uh, but uh, i think now we've come to a stage where we are very clear of requirement and able to bucketize so i hope this will be helpful <laughs> yeah i'm i'm sure this is very helpful uh, so they don't have to go through the same uh, learning phase as you guys have uh, this is this is very very uh, good information for us uh, and uh, now i'm going to move uh, from here from the composition of a martech stack to the approach now so there are many ways to build a stack and um, so is there any thumb rule or a guideline that a brand should follow you know when they start building a martech stack for their company or uh, the other common question is uh, build versus buy so do i build or should i buy products that are readily available also so what what are your thoughts on uh, all of these yeah so i i would say this is a very important question uh, thanks for bringing this up uh, you know uh, typically to to answer the question of a thumb rule uh, building your stack is never going to be one size fits all uh, this is very clear from my personal experience uh, you might start with something uh, not even take it to completion and then you realize that the goal has shifted or the needs have completely you know reversed uh, and this all happens when you're in hyper growth obviously in, in a more stable environment you're able to uh, you know project and estimate how your needs are going to shift so uh, building your stack is never going to be a one size fits all no thumb rule completely depends uh, though on the stage in which your business is existing today and what your goals are in the next couple of years or at least the next couple of quarters you know so uh, if i was to sort of advise you know my advice to early stage startups and smbs uh, please stay prudent focus on top of the funnel metrics uh, when it comes to selection of your martech providers uh, the essence will be in sticking with basics and looking at partnering with providers that offer uh, flexibility as well as cost efficiency uh, don't go out looking for the best cutting edge tools uh, just because they are carrying more features but essentially look at the platforms that will offer the basics to you in the most cost efficient manner so that is my advice to uh, early stage startups and smbs also uh, not advisable to constantly shuffle between platforms uh, i'll tell you uh, this this used to happen a lot uh, in my previous projects you know and this not only leads to breakages in data but also disturbs your business planning because uh, when you are doing your annual operating plans you have a certain amount of budget towards uh, your analytics and uh, platform cost you know so if you're able to plan this efficiently, look at all of those metrics and choosing your vendors, uh, it will be a much better spot. Uh, if I was to talk about the needs of an enterprise and a large scale business point of view, always best to partner with bottom of the funnel metrics focused platforms, you know, that offer cutting edge and class leading solutions, uh, probably ability to customize and uh, specifically platforms that spend a significant amount of budget on research and development. Uh, understanding your industry in a deeper manner uh, catering to your local geography and the needs of your line of business uh, so you will see that uh, some of these platforms have really emerged in the Indian market in the last couple of quarters 
uh, while the top players have actually slumped back because the focus is not just on innovation but also on understanding the local geography so think local act global applies to uh, platforms also uh, one important consideration if i was to answer the question of build versus buy this is this is an excellent question you know whether you should invest 100% in third party platforms or look to build your own uh, i think i have now come to realize that as businesses will scale up and reach critical mass and uh, critical mass think anything beyond 100 million plus users uh, going all the way up to say 500 million plus so for example uh, i i work with times internet and uh, at at times we we get more than 500 million users across our products so the question of investing in your own stack alongside industry standard tools becomes more and more important because now your investment is going to be significant enough for you to take a look at the the needs that are getting addressed from these platforms versus what is going out as an roi point of view so uh, you know why should you invest in your own stack uh, some some things that would come to my mind would include uh, third party tools taking a significant amount of investment at scale uh, b obviously with, there are a lot of privacy concerns around user data and laws that are getting formulated every day you know all about gdpr and how even platforms like google and facebook have to comply and all advertisers have to comply now so data management becomes more difficult as we go along you know and it will it will obviously become more structured and process oriented so that be, that makes a good case for a first party uh, you know platform creation see uh, always good to have an internal voice on data uh, i feel that this can significantly surprise you as um, as marketers to see that uh, data is vastly different when you measure it internally uh, just to just to give a case in point uh, some of our products where we work not necessarily with just google and facebook but other uh, acquisition sources also uh, while one third party mmp platform would say that it was very close to what the partner said as numbers you know the discrepancy would not even be 10% Uh, but our own internal analytics engine called growthrx uh, would would say that it was in excess of 30% and now this is a significant learning because uh, this internal voice gives us another funnel to to see performance you know so we would not only look at the uh, the cost structures and the performance efficiencies as per the third party but also benchmark it against our first party tool uh, also the other point is that no one will really understand your business needs better than you Uh, the need for customized solutions will keep uh, becoming more you know significant as you scale and you will obviously want to look at data in a more granular manner so it's not uh, something that third party tools will always be able to cater to and that makes a good case for build and uh, uh, just to talk two minutes about uh, the the case in point on building things we have a internal analytics engine called growthrx that is an aggregator of martech tools for internet businesses so the need for this uh, platform really emerged for us when we had to work with you know at least six seven partners look at uh, acquisition from a different player look to engage users through push notifications and email and sms through three different providers uh, look at user behavior analysis from uh, another provider so you know the crm was getting powered by another provider now as a executive or a chief marketing officer uh this becomes very very frustrating because you have different voices and all data points might not necessarily talk to each other so uh, you know we invested uh, in creating our own internal tool which does all of this it's a nifty less than 50 kb sdk and it's a plug and play solution so if anybody is interested to talk to me about this after the session feel free to reach out to me uh but essentially that was one of the case in point for us building this out Well, wow, that's uh, interesting. Uh, you bring up about the internal engine that you've built, uh, Sahil. I, I think I'm going to talk to you about it as well afterwards to learn more and find yeah. out what it does and how you know it works and all of that. Uh, moving to our next question, I think you said it right when you said that you know the business should help you decide uh, whether you should invest in build versus buy. Uh, the other question that comes up when someone is uh, you know thinking about Martech stack is. at what stage do we re reevaluate the martech stack that we've already built any indicators or you know any specific considerations that businesses should know around here as well yeah so uh, you know reevaluation typically happens when it's more fire fight uh, than anything else uh, at least in my personal experience that's what i've seen uh, typical uh, reasons why you would want to reevaluate uh, a the stack that you built is not really talking to 
each other you know the stack isn't like a hub and spoke model uh, the hub being the 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 core stack you know it's at the center of it and and the core serves as a single source of customer truth and all the other non core tools will plug into the core so to give you an example for example uh, it might be one particular platform where you are looking at all the data uh, but all your other non core platforms are integrated into this core platform so uh, to, to give an example for example growth rx would have an api uh, you know integration with most of the non core stack so uh, if you were to send sms or push notifications to our customers then that solution will be integrated with our own internal tool so now for us that growth rx becomes a core stack you know so just just as a hypothetical example that's one uh, one reason why i would reevaluate if that hub and spoke model isn't working b uh, the data discrepancies are too significant to ignore you know uh, if you're if you're constantly looking at data from third party and and your uh, dashboards and you see that there is something uh, you know not making sense on those discrepancies suddenly started to creep up you obviously try to figure out you troubleshoot and still not able to solve for it uh, that is a time when you should reevaluate because it might also mean that the technology stack that the provider has or the service has something has changed in that uh, equation you know and this is a good time to reevaluate uh, third when investment into the stack is significant and you want to optimize cost so as i said uh, the more you scale the more money you put into your uh, martech stack you will have to be prudent at at any given point in time there is a certain cost of recording events there is a certain cost of uh, uh, storing events you know uh, and all of these when you calculate it uh, annually will be extremely significant it can even go up to say 30 to 50 crores at a group level just for a google analytics uh, sort of a tool you know hypothetically and that's a significant amount of money uh, fourth uh, sometimes it happens that there is a shift in market dynamics uh, with competitor tools are capitalizing more on support uh, technology research and development so i remember we used to work with a third party mmp which was you know class leading at that point in time but and there was another competitor that was just beginning to emerge in the market today the equation is absolutely reverse this emerging player is now the market leader just because they are able to extend local support and they did that kind of r&d for our geography and we were able to shift from one to the other so uh, in my mind these might be the consideration points when you are uh, reevaluating your martech stack okay and um, i have one last question before we open this up for audience questions um, you know looking at it in a very futuristic manner because technology changes every day and uh, we are talking about martech so where do you see martech headed over the next decade or so so uh, martech is already evolving i think uh, you know it has impacted deeply all functions in the last 5 years uh, one thing i know for a fact is that just like consolidation of brands happens you know for existence similarly consolidation of martech is inevitable uh, you know slightly more evolved brands uh, and and you know highly evolved brands like times also uh, you know uh, we we understand the need for having our own you know uh, you know martech stack in place and we've already put it up we did it 5 years before the market did and uh, that obviously leads to a lot of uh, cost efficiency as well as personalization so martech in my mind is headed towards that consolidation phase uh, we we as brands and advertisers will always demand uh, one unified dashboard that has always been the dream uh, i know google's been trying to do it firebase is obviously out there uh, but ultimately uh, it has to become simpler And, and that is one thing that uh, you know this is headed towards b uniformity and consistency of uh, logic that is something that all uh, martech stacks are now looking to gear towards uh, because what happens is when you shift from one to the other uh, it is not necessary that the data will remain the same uh, but that becomes a challenge when you are planning you know when you are in business planning so you know that that uniformity of logic is also something i feel martech is headed towards and c greater stability because uh, you know the need for privacy data laws one has to be compliant across all of these spheres so if you are you know going with the most cutting edge platform but it is not compliant with the the laws of the land then that becomes a challenge so that will also be uh, a trend that will surface that all of these platforms will want to safeguard their interests as well as their clients interests so in my mind this is where this is this is going to head martech 
thank you sahil uh, for taking time out and sharing uh, your thoughts on building a martech stack with, with us uh, it's now time to open our uh, discussion for audience questions and see what questions have come in so we are going to quickly scan through uh, the questions and uh, ask them out sahil uh, for my first question for you i have it on my screen here guys um yeah uh, what are the best martech newsletters and which is your go to resource for martech updates wow great question uh, so getting straight to it uh, three three avenues of uh, news and uh, staying updated with what's happening one is uh, definitely subscribe to a couple of these websites like martech today uh, marketing land uh, probably martech cube so these are three places where i constantly get my dose of news and not specifically from my geography but uh, also from uh, the west uh, what's happening in china and that also gives you an idea whether you're still on the more cutting edge bleeding edge side of town or or now everything that you do is becoming mainstream uh, b uh, look at attending a couple of these events like the martech india conference uh, i'm sure there are more martech conferences but essentially it that gives you a flavor of what's really happening in the industry right now what are some of the new uh, new r&d is happening and and you get a chance to experience experience it first hand talk to founders so that's always an interesting conversation uh, but the biggest recommendation for me as an advertiser a brand is that when when these platforms call you or they come to you you don't really take it as a sales call but uh, take it as as a learning opportunity because uh, you know even if i have a martech stack in place and it is stable uh, but but i know that there are a couple of uh, vendors that that tell me that they have something new i want to look at it i want to make sure that uh, i am able to absorb those information pieces to either make our stack more powerful or look at uh, a delta where i can have these vendors come in and contribute so uh, between these online reading opportunities uh, events and uh, talking to vendors i think you you will be you will be in a good place oh that's that's very insightful and i think interesting that you bring up uh, the whole vendor piece because i think many of us uh, don't look at it that way uh, usually it's uh, tough for vendors to sort of get through because most of us are busy and don't want to spend time unless we really in the market shopping so i think that's an interesting perspective you bring to Uh, the whole conversation around vendors. Probably the the summarize summarization is that you should be window shopping all the time uh, <laughs> when you are uh, specifically looking at Martech. And uh, I have utmost respect for all these platforms because they are competing with such thin margins, you know, and uh, they're trying to understand our business. So it is our responsibility also to make life easier for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is. Uh, what is the average percent of marketing budget that cxos plan to invest in martech how is this percentage involving or and wow. do you have any insights on geographies based on geographies great question uh, so again depending on the size of your business the life cycle of your business uh, for for instance uh, you know a, a well established organization might spend almost up to 20 to 25 percent of their budgets uh, towards Martech and uh, platform costs. You know, this is from one single business point of view. Uh, this cost might increase if you're a SMB because uh, when you're in hyper growth uh, stage, at that point in time, your investment into uh, Martech will obviously need to be higher. So, uh, just to take a ballpark number, anywhere between 15 to 25 percent. of your uh, budget should go towards uh, planning for your martech stack that is when you decide that it is future proof it is stable and that the propensity for you to jump from one to the other will not be very high in the short run uh, that is when this uh, investment will start to come down because because as you mature and as you come into a stabler model uh, your cost efficiencies will kick in so uh, that at that point in time it could go down anywhere between 15% 10 to 15% uh, i think that that would be the answer yeah absolutely um, and one last question i'm going to take there are many more uh, but i think this last one because we are running out of time i'm happy uh, to take all questions on email also <laughs> uh, 
uh, how uh, how does martic evaluation for cxos differ in india versus developed countries uh, is there a difference in the approach or uh, the way people look at a martic stack uh, in uh, developing versus developed countries i think that's what this person wants to ask ah uh, interesting question so uh, the way i would like to answer this is that i feel developing economies have a far greater appreciation and need for uh, getting their data right Uh, so, for example, uh, look at look at the context of India, because we are a mobile-first economy and we are probably having the largest number of users after China. Uh, our need for understanding data as a brand is much higher than the West, because that's a more stabler model, as I said. So, a lot of innovation will will start happening and emerging from developing economies. So, for once, we are in a better zone. You know, let me put it this way. Uh, do CXOs across both geographies not appreciate the need for a stack? that's not the case the cxos across the board understand that it is required what makes it challenging is the fact that not everybody has within the organization the same intent of uh, of getting to the right data set uh, and it requires a lot of culture uh, creation also to get into the habit of looking at data across functions so uh, i feel i feel that ultimately whether it is the west or developing or developed economies these solutions are definitely finding uh, you know greater appreciation across across the globe thanks thanks sahil uh, i went back to check so there's uh, one more question that uh, i'd like to ask sure. um i think uh, when marketers um yeah when brands invest in uh, a martic stack obviously they are request investing a lot of time dollars and resources so can brands measure the effectiveness of all these efforts is it possible to measure the effectiveness of your Mart Mart martic stack oh definitely and i think it is it is a must uh, to be done you know ultimately you need to have a a real time solution in place which is going to keep looking at the data points that are coming from each platform and uh, they should be able to flag the right relevant uh, teams as well as the executives as and when there is a discrepancy that comes in so so for example uh, you know you know your data and that data is being charted across the board every week you get your sales call reports you get your acquisition reports transaction summaries and uh, all of these are now being serviced through these martech stacks which uh, which is which is what we call automation in the data that we get and you have a report ready for you when you enter office so uh, my advice the first one or two hours of your day should go in looking at this data and uh, as soon as you are able to find a discrepancy you should flag it off uh, typically we've seen uh, you know uh, an sdk upgrade was required uh, uh, something changed within the logic uh, the way that uh, that platform has been calculating data these are easily fixable solutions if you are able to detect them early and are able to mitigate them early and if you have a real time solution in place to track these changes uh, it becomes slightly more complex when uh, when even the provider is unaware of these issues and that is when i will go back to that revaluation stage that is the time when you have to sort of uh, figure out an answer whether you want to remain committed or at that point you want to move to another team so i hope that answers it yeah i think uh, that's uh, i think this question requires much longer time probably a whole webinar in itself on measuring the effectiveness of a martech yes, stack we do at some point but yeah uh, thanks for the short answer i think that's uh, that brings us to the end of the webinar thank you once again sahil uh, this has been a very very uh, insightful discussion and uh, i am for sure going home a much much smarter marketer today and uh, i'm sure our listeners also will agree with me uh, there's so much we've all learned through you uh, i want to also thank our audience for staying with us and for their active participation Uh, we'll be sharing a recording with you all uh, in the coming days, so stay tuned to Moe Engage. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, it was great speaking uh, with you, Akshita, and I hope there was some uh, meaningful takeaway for the listeners uh, that they would have gained some fresh perspective or at least validated their existing ones around uh, Martech stacks. And I hope this is useful in their future planning. So thank you so Absolutely. much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sahil. Thank you. Have a good day. Have yeah. a good day, everyone. Bye.